Welcome to this video about very useful counters. I picked 6 different cards which can be used in a wide variety of decks depending on your playstyle or which evolution you want to use. But this 3.3 version is my favorite. With the evolved royal giant and skeletons and the lightning and the lock it is very flexible and you can adapt to a lot of different decks your opponent tries to surprise you with. Before I show you all the counters which are categorized in chapters so you can find the ones that are useful for you more easily I like to tell a little bit of its importance. Of course it's preventing you from receiving tower damage but gain Gaining an elixir advantage is just as useful. Lots of players seem to forget that dominating in Clash Royale comes down to a simple rule. Getting an elixir advantage. Remember your opponent's cards and remember which of its attacks can be countered with less elixir. That's it. So some counters may seem boring, but getting through are three successful counters may be your key to victory. Try to remember all your opponent's cards. If you're having trouble with that, try to practice by saying your opponent's cards out loud. I would suggest to do this in a private situation. Don't want you to be mumbling about the little prince or giant in a public bathroom. That uh, might give some bad ideas. <laughs> But you really should know your opponent's cards within a minute. So he can't surprise you and you already know which cards you can counter easily. If you can build an attack where your elixir bar is full and the opponent's one is at 40%, the success rate is obviously higher. So knowing which cards can be countered with less elixir is very valuable. And try not to waste or bleed elixir. So with that being said, let's go back to the topic. I might show a couple of counters that are some simpler or already known to you. But I really like to make a video for all Clash Royale players. So the degree of difficulty may go up and down. Please bear with me. Let's start with the Electro Spirit. When a skeleton barrel is approaching your tower, you have to be sure to drop the spirit a short fragment earlier than the balloon pops. When facing the graveyard, you have to delay it a couple of milliseconds. Wait till you see three or four skeletons, so the Electro Spirit chain gets more value. When you're facing the Goblin Gang or the Skeleton Army, make sure to position the Electro Spirit to the left of the middle with a high placement. This ensures that half of the troops are drawn to the spirit, so the tower doesn't face them all at once and the troops are more scattered for the chain. This is also a simple one, but it's still a counter and you did it with less elixir. The minions can be drawn away from the tower as well, so the tower has a little more time to clear them. I think this is the most useful one. Position it high again to the left of the middle and the hunter can be countered with the help of the tower. On to the next. We'll start with a very useful one, but also a tricky one. You have to make sure to deploy the skeletons just before the bandit dashes. So the skeletons don't have time to move and the dash lands exactly where you want it to be. The sparky is an easy one. You just have to make sure to deploy the skeletons around the vehicle. This positioning also works for a lot of other cards. So here's a quick selection. The musketeer, the electro wizard, the hunter and the ice wizard. Just surround them and you'll be fine. If your opponent breaks up an attack with the wall breakers, you'll have to deploy the skeletons quick enough and in the middle. There are different ways to approach the mini P.E.K.K.A. But placing it high again is in my opinion the best option. If your opponent has a spell, he can utilize it either way. So I prefer having the mini P.E.K.K.A. further away from the tower. Just in case your counter fails. To counter the Skarmy, you have to place the skeletons high again so the swarm gets scattered and your tower has more time to clear them. Everybody knows how strong the evolution skeletons can be. They can counter the majority of all the ground troops. So I will only show you these. With the shooting rascals at the back, it is important to position them closer to the shooting ones. Positioning them to the front may result in termination because of the shooting rascals at the back. The area of splash damage from the Mega Knight can also kill the skeletons before they multiply. So position them around the Mega Knight and time it before he wants to jump the tower. You can counter the Goblin Barrel with this positioning, but I would only do so if it's urgent. Let's go to the next. The Hunter can kill lots of cards with one shot, but the video would get very long if I showed them all. So with a split screen and a sped up version, I can show you some handy ones and more in the same time. The Giant, the Lava Hound, the Barbarians and the Balloon can take your tower with ease. So having this amazing strong defensive card in your deck is a pleasure. Try to draw the Giant Skeleton to the top middle again. So you can get multiple shots in and the tower can as well. You can also clear the Goblin Barrel with one shot if you position it here. The Elite Barbarians can be countered the same way as the Giant Skeleton, positioning high and in the middle to get some extra time and shots in. 
When facing the P.E.K.K.A, try to position the hunter left of the tower with a small offset so you're able to make multiple shots and you can get help from the King Tower. Another heavy unit, the Mega Knight. Make sure to position the hunter close enough so he won't make the jump, but also far enough to get multiple shots in. I really think these counters are very useful because those units can do lots of damage. And this is the most useful one, defending against the Lumberloon attack, a 9 elixir combo. So if you do this successfully, you can start a counter attack with a 5 elixir advantage. Next chapter, counters with the ghost. If the barbarians are approaching your tower, I would deploy the ghost high to the middle and time the placement when a couple of barbarians already passed you, so they have to walk back and that will give you and the tower some extra time. The invisibility of the ghost is also very useful. When the witch is attacking, it can let her lock to the tower and the ghost can finish everything with its splash damage. The witch does a little tower damage, but you can counter with a full health ghost. If you're under attack by a dark prince or a bandit, I would try to take care of it before it can do its dash. It's not a, ve it's not a real accelerating counter, but it's still a plus one. This one is a little better. The bowler is a little higher in elixir, so it's more useful. Just before he locks onto the tower, I'm going to attack him. Resulting in a plus two. So just as I mentioned before, I'll initiate the attack before the bandit can start its dash. To the fisherman. The fisherman is known for its king tower activations, and that's always the first thing you have to use it for. With the assistance of the king tower, the fisherman can also counter lots of big and heavy units. As you can see in this example, with one of the strongest hard hitting troops, the fisherman can draw and stun him and counter him with ease with the help of the tower. The same goes for the mega knight, position him slightly over the middle of the arena, so the invisible line to the left lane, and this big boy will be countered as well. The same tactic is applicable to the Mighty Miner, I think you get it by now. I shall increase the speed a little. And even the Prince is helpless, with the assistance of all three towers. So I hope you guys are still watching, thank you for that in advance. I'm very thankful for all my viewers, so if you have a suggestion or a remark, feel free to say it in the comments, I'm always happy to hear what I can do to improve my videos. So I leave it with this, I hope to see you back in my future videos. Thank you for watching.